Hi, I'm Brian Anderson, and I'm here with my colleague, Nick Dentry. And today we're going to take a deeper look at Amazon Q Developer CLI custom agents. We're going to start by creating a research agent, and then we're going to use that research agent to create a documentation agent. Before we get started, you'll need the Q Developer CLI installed, as well as the AWS Knowledge MCP server. If you're unsure of how to do that, look to the previous videos in this series in the description below. Let's get started. Since we already set up Q to be able to get the latest information from the AWS documentation, I figured a good starting point would be to use Q itself to build our first agent. The agent we'll be building is a research agent that will be able to fetch information from various web sources. The agent will then be able to save its report to the specified output location to be used as context later on. With that in mind, let's start up QChat and add these two markdown files as context. Using the slash context command will allow QChat to add these markdown files to this chat session. Next, we'll move forward with letting Q create the agent definition file. By using the AWS Knowledge MCP server to search and read AWS documentation related to the QCLI, enough context is gathered to understand how to create the agent. This is then combined with the specific requirements we provided when defining what we wanted from our research agent. While Q gathers all the necessary context, I wanted to spend a few minutes going over some of the specifics of Q custom agents. Custom agents can be defined either globally or locally within the project itself. This is useful if you want to share agents within a project team. You can also create custom agents by using the QCLI or even from within the chat session using these agent create commands. To start a chat session with a particular agent, you can use the dash dash agent parameter. You can also list all of the available agents and swap between agents within a chat session. Additionally, you can set up a default agent that will launch each time Q chat is started. Here are a few examples of what an agent definition file might look like. And here are some of the core configuration options when setting up a new agent. Out of the box, the QCLI has access to tools such as reading and writing from the file system, executing bash commands, and other tools that don't require MCP integration. Here are a few examples of how you can configure your agents to automatically source context or allow tools to run certain commands without human interaction. When trusting tools within an agent, it's best practice to consider the security implications of what those tools do. Any tools that have the ability to write files or make changes in your environment should be carefully considered. Additionally, when deciding which resources to include in your context, please only include the necessary files so as not to pollute your context window. Now that we have an overview of how to create and configure custom agents within the QCLI, we can see the agent definition file that Q created for our research agent, which includes the name, description, prompt, tools, allowed tools, and our tool settings which mostly seem to match what we described in our markdown file. One key thing is missing though. Our research agent should be able to search the web to find additional context for whatever topic it's researching. For that, we'll add an MCP server using the same QCLI MCP command that we showcased in our previous video. This time we'll add the dash dash agent parameter to target the research agent specifically. Since we want our agent to be an expert on AWS topics, we'll add in the AWS Knowledge MCP. Additionally, we'll add a simple fetch MCP server from the official Model Context Protocol GitHub repository. I'll quickly show those MCP servers and how they were added to the agent definition file. Now that we've added these MCP servers, you can see that their tools are not listed in the Tools or Allowed Tools section. Let's go back to the original terminal window where we created this agent and let it know that its agent definition file has changed and to add those tools. As you can see, the QCLI is able to detect those changes and make the appropriate updates to the agent definition file. We'll go ahead and accept these changes and move back to a new terminal window where we'll launch the research agent. 
At this point, we can see the MCP servers that we requested being loaded. We'll now move on to creating our second agent, the documentation agent, following a similar process. We know what we want the documentation agent to do, but we don't necessarily know what tools we can use to help us accomplish the agent's stated goals. This is where we can leverage the research agent to do that research for us. By providing the context of what we're trying to build, as well as where to look, the agent can go off and do its own research and provide its findings to the output location that we defined when creating the research agent. As you can see, Q is using the fetch tool that we provided to learn more about which MCP servers have tools for generating documentation and architecture diagrams. We can then leverage these findings as context when we actually create the documentation agent itself. By doing this, we isolate the context so Q knows exactly what it needs to do to implement these MCP servers without filling up our context window with tool use and web page content that isn't relevant to what we're trying to build. We'll go ahead and accept this research, which will drop a file in the research agent's findings folder. We'll now move back to our other terminal window, where we'll use this research to help us create our documentation agent. First, we'll use the slash context show command to see the existing context. As you can see, we already have the create custom agent context added. We just need to remove the existing research agent context, add the documentation agent information, as well as the research findings, and instruct Q to create the agent based on that research. Now that Q has generated the agent definition file, we review it to make sure that it has all the components we want. Since the file looks good, we'll type Y to accept the changes, which will put them into the CLI agents folder. This now allows Q to launch the documentation agent from anywhere in your file system. For demo purposes, we'll now pull in a sample project from the AWS Samples GitHub repository to run the documentation agent over the sample project's code base and ensure the agent is able to use its tools effectively. For this portion, I'll speed up the video so that we can see the documentation agent in action and take a look at the final generated artifacts. The code documentation generation MCP server goes through a few phases to understand what's in the repository as well as build out a plan for the detailed documentation that it generates. As I quickly scroll through, you'll notice the folder structures as well as code examples and even flow diagrams to help developers understand the contents of the project. By modifying the documentation agent's prompt, you can guide the agent to give the information that's most important to you. All of this information is then used as context for the diagram MCP server to be able to create the architecture diagrams you see here. I hope this video helps with understanding how you can leverage the Amazon Q Developer CLI custom agents functionality for your specialized workflows. Have a great day and see you in the next video.